Hello, this is Kedolytics and welcome to today's session. If today is your first time of joining the Kedolytics channel or viewing a video on our platform, we encourage you to subscribe to the channel and turn on the post notification bell so you are always notified whenever a new video is released. In today's content or video, we will be looking at count outcomes and what kind of analysis or model we can fit around count outcomes. So if you've been following our videos for some time, you come to realize that we use different statistical tools to run specific type of statistical analysis. Some of these statistical softwares include JASP, SPSS, Data, Python, Graphpad, Prism, yeah, and SPSS. So generally, so far we have been discussing uh, into detail some of the inferential stats from linear regression to logistic regression analysis. And specifically, when it comes to the logistic regression analysis, we established that the outcome variable of interest helps us to discern which of the analysis to run, be it binary logistic regression, ordinal logistic regression, or multinomial logistic regression analysis. So if you want to have more insight about what would qualify you to run any of these statistical analysis, we want to scroll to these particular videos so yes, yeah, so you can enrich your knowledge on them. But when it comes to count outcomes, what comes to mind? Generally, count outcomes are basically discrete numbers of events that occur within a specific period of time. Now, let me illustrate this to make it more simple. So now we want to see how many times in a year a set of people will have diarrhea. And so we monitor these people for one good year and the number of times each person has diarrhea is recorded. So at the end of the period, we count the number of times each person has diarrhea. And then we want to say something about it in reference to some characteristics or factors. That outcome, the number of times of diarrhea within a period of time, is what we call a count outcome. Now we can also use this example of a particular disease. We want to see the number of times people within a, separate, a specific population group or specific ge geographical location within a specific period of time who develop a particular disease condition within that specified period of time. So when you are doing something like that, or when you have such an outcome, that outcome is called a count outcome. Another, another example is the number of times a mother would attend antenatal care before she delivers. And so you may want to count the number of times she attends ANC during the nine months and see what uh, statistical information that can give us, given their characteristics like maybe marital status, educational level, and so many other things. So generally, when we have such an outcome, the type of uh, analysis we want to run predicting such outcome is what we call the Poisson model or regression, or we also consider a negative binomial regression or model. Now, the key difference between the Poisson regression or model and the negative binomial model or regression model has to do with the assumption. Now, generally, we assume that there should be no over dispersion where the conditional variance should be equal to the conditional mean. And so when you realize that this assumption is valid, then you can go ahead and run your Poisson regression or model around your, out, your count outcome. However, when you realize that the conditional variance is greater than the conditional mean, then it means that there is what? Dispersion. Hence, we cannot use the Poisson regression, but rather we'll have to use the negative binomial regression. So this is a key difference that we can use to uh, inform our decision as to whether we are using a binomial, sorry, a negative binomial regression model 
or a Poisson regression model. So first, we need to check the assumption. And when we check the assumption, if the assumption is valid, then we run the Poisson regression. However, if we violate the assumption where the conditional variance is greater than the conditional mean, then we know that there's over dispersion. Hence, we cannot use the by the, the Poisson regression, or rather we use the negative binomial regression model. So in this video, we are going to see or explore how we can use the Stata platform to check this assumption that will help us to decipher between Poisson regression or model and the negative binomial regression model. So now, as we mentioned, A and C attendance is a form of count variable or outcome which we can use in this regard to do this. So basically, this is a dummy data set about um, A and C attendance by some women over a period of time. So now we want to see whether there is, we are checking the assumption. So first we want to select our outcome variable, which is A and C. And this is NB, reg, this negative binomial regression. So this will help us to check the assumption we are interested in. So we want to see whether maybe mother's education, the religion, the wealth status, and the location. Okay, let's select and the place of delivery. We want to see how this affects the A and C attendance. I dots, comma, I, R, R. That is the incident risk uh, ratio. So by this code, we can be able to see whether our assumption is violated or not. So to be able to check that, you type this. So your outcome variable is a count outcome, and then you add your factors or your covariates. Then you click on enter, and then it says what fitting Poisson model, iteration zero one blah blah, and then it does it runs uh, uh this one for us gives us the number of observation the likelihood ratio, and then gives us the probability or likelihood ratio and the studio R squared and then the log likelihood and the dispersion and then the mean. Now, what we are interested in is this one, the likelihood ratio test of the R5 for zero, and the probability value here is what? It's less than 0 0.001. So since it is less than 0 0.01, we, or 0 0.05, we, we reject the null hypothesis that this um, does not violate the principle of over dispersion. And so, so it stands to reason that this particular model that we are running violates our assumption where the variance is greater than the, the conditional mean. So the conditional variance is, is, is greater than the conditional mean. And since that is the case, then we have to fall on what? The negative binomial regression model. So basically, this is how you can be able to test the assumption that backs your choice of whether you go for a binomial, sorry, negative binomial regression or a Poisson regression model. If you find content such as this useful, you may want to subscribe to the channel. You may want to turn on your post notification bell so anytime a video like this is released, you benefit. You also want to like, share, so the algorithm can continue to recommend this video to people within your circle. Until we meet again on our next one, this is Capitalytics, and it's a bye.